Well, thank you, everyone. I have to say, I am blown away by the energy in this room. It makes me feel that working together, there's no problem we can't solve. But of course, the specific issues that we're dealing with today are misinformation and disinformation. I'm, by background, a geoscientist. And there is probably no topic more essential to our future here on this planet that has suffered more from disinformation than climate change. After all, who doesn't want to be told that, oh, climate change isn't happening, or, oh, well, maybe it's happening, but people have nothing to do with it. Or the worst possible thing to hear is that it's happening, it's here, but there's nothing we can do about it. So eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow we all die. <laughs> well, you know, this is a, a very bad position to take, and it threatens our children and our grandchildren. And you just heard from Rachel about the misinformation associated with COVID-19. This misinformation, which probably stemmed from a lack of trust in our medical community, caused people to abandon scientifically proven interventions and treatments and instead grasp at home re remedies, which at best were ineffective or at worst were actually dangerous. Science is the one human endeavor that we have had throughout the ages to best predict the outcome of our actions. Science is never complete, it's never perfect, but it's the best we have. So we have, uh, as Marsha has said, a problem. The world has a problem. We have a problem. And uh, we believe also that we have solutions that can be brought to the fore. When uh, the National Academy of Sciences and the Nobel Foundation discussed how do we go about the next uh, Nobel Prize Summit, the second that we're holding, uh, what can we do to address this particular issue? And I think that's the question we should all ask ourselves. What can we do? What can I do to address and find solutions? If you consider the, the universe of Nobel Prizes, the science, the uh, literature, and peace prizes, at the heart of all of those disciplines, is, in one way or the other, the quest for truth. And uh, disinformation, misinformation, and attacks on truth seekers undermines scientific progress. It undermines and weakens public deliberation, the freedom of expression, and democracy. And it promotes conflict and tension in society. So uh, we should do something about this. And uh, this meeting, as you've already experienced, will be looking at uh, the histories of uh, disinformation and misinformation. It will be looking at the current dimensions and challenges of disinformation and misinformation. But most importantly, it will be uh, trying to look at solutions. What can we do to... Uh, really tackle this monumental challenge. And the National Academy of Sciences is so thrilled to be partnering with the Nobel Foundation on this. At the core of both of our organizations is the recognition and promotion of excellence and the very highest quality science imaginable. And that is why we're working together to uh, attack this problem of mis- and disinformation. Our organizations are all about excellence, integrity, truth, and trust. And we hope in the course of this meeting that we will help all of you identify where can you go to find the truth? Who can you trust to deliver it to you? And finally, how can we all find hope in solutions to address these very difficult problems? I'm so pleased that you're all here today to help us with this. Um, today in our plenary sessions 
and then we'll, we have two other days devoted to uh, breakouts for problem solving and then dissemination on the third day. And we have such uh, magnitude of people, such uh, combination of uh, backgrounds, professions, disciplines brought together to address this complex challenge. Much like the Nobel Prize with these disciplines, scientific disciplines, literature, culture, peace, and peaceful political action. When you enter this building, or before you enter this building, you'll see the uh, Einstein Memorial just outside arguably the most famous Nobel laureate. He was, and actually next week marks 100 years after his first his, his Nobel lecture, he won the Nobel Prize for physics, but it's less known that he also has a stake in a Nobel Peace Prize. His actions spanned deep science and political activism for peace because he, armed with his uh, scientific, scientific rigor and excellence and his ethical compass, together with other experts, including a good number of Nobel laureates, issued the so-called uh, Einstein-Russell Manifesto, where on the basis of their knowledge of what was at stake, called on world leaders to address the scourge of nuclear weapons and to seek peaceful resolution of conflict. That spurred the so-called Pugwash movement that later got the Nobel Peace Prize. The um, audience today and the program over the next few days comprises 11 existing and living Nobel laureates that will be participating. One of those laureates is Maria Ressa, a peace laureate uh, who uh, won the prize in 2021 exactly for addressing the issue of misinformation and disinformation. And in her Nobel lecture a couple of years back, she said that an atomic, an invisible atomic bomb has exploded in our information ecosystem. And she called on all of us to work together to uh, mobilize against that, and she used the word, arms race uh, in our information ecosystem and the uh, last weeks and days have indeed uh, demonstrated to us that there is an arms race out there and uh, it needs to be dealt with. And uh, that uh, requires people from different disciplines to work together. So, as you've heard, this is the second Nobel Summit. The first was held in 2021 with the theme, Our Planet, Our Future. This was an opportunity to bring together leaders from political spheres, from business, from education, from uh, academia, and uh, from science, and have young people and older people together to talk about the sustainable, what would a sustainable future for human life on this planet look like? Uh, there were, um, many outcomes from this, but the most important things that were happening were bringing together these diverse voices to look into the future and figure out how together we could address climate change, fight inequality, and spur technical innovation to solve the problems that are plaguing us in terms of our unsustainable use of the resources of this planet. There were a number of important initiatives that came out of this. One of the most obvious was a call to action that was signed by more than 150 Nobel laureates and science leaders that called on people from all spheres of influence to look at what their roles and responsibilities were to achieve this brighter future for uh, future generations. Uh, another group that came out of this was the IPIE, which is the International Panel for the Information Environment. This was an idea that was generated during one of the breakout sessions at the last uh, Nobel Summit, and it actually provides a bridge to this one because this information environment is what we have to understand and we have to figure out how to make it work in more beneficial ways. 
They will be officially rolling out their agenda at uh, this summit. So we'll meet them at this summit. We'll meet others that have done things to uh, foster solutions to address this problem. We will uh, meet youth, older people, academics, activists that uh, come together uh, at this summit. And we should all, in this hall, and the thousands that are uh, watching this uh, digitally, also uh, take part and uh, ask ourselves, what can we do? What can I do? But more importantly, what can we do together? Because it is possible. We'll see those examples over the next coming days. It is possible, and that's why the title of the meeting, despite all the difficulties and uh, problems, is Truth, Trust and Hope. Thank you.